Hello, and welcome to Ghosts of Dufferin County and Beyond at Home Edition again. I'm your host, Marianne Kennedy, and I have a fantastic guest for our show today, and I can't wait to introduce you to her. Her name is Lisa Burrow, and Lisa has been in the healing arts profession for about 25 years, so a really long and amazing time. She's a spa business owner, a mom, a Reiki master and instructor, medical Qigong practitioner, aromatherapist, touch for health practitioner, and a registered acupuncturist and Chinese medicine practitioner. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Marianne. It's so good to be here. So wonderful to see you without a mask. <laughs> and what do we mean by that? Of course, I, we, you know, Lisa and I, our journeys cross every once in a while. And of course, over the last, what is it, maybe 10, 11 months, we've seen each other with masks on. So it is nice to see people without a mask. Yeah, it, it, there's something very nurturing and refreshing and healing just to see somebody smile again, because we're all walking around with these masks. You know what? That's absolutely true. I was actually thinking of that the other day. I was in the grocery store and I could tell that someone was smiling at me, but all we can do is tell by the eyes. And when I want to smile back, you hope that, you know, they can see the smile happening too. So it's a real kind of strange thing happening, isn't it? Yeah. So it's such a treat to be able to see your smiling face and your smiling eyes. <laughs> I love that. So Lisa, you're a real sort of um, staple in the energy healing community in Canada. Okay, so a lot of folks that do energy healing work, certainly in Ontario, they know about you. You've done a lot of really great work yourself. Tell us, um, you know, and, and, and I, I, I recognize that you have a lot of years doing this work, but tell us what brought you into the healing arts? Well, it was everything I find is a journey and a fluke. I actually was going to school to... Uh, um, be an English teacher and work with kids with learning disabilities. That was how I started my journey. And um, I just, I would do a lot of um, camps with kids. And one day I actually hurt my back and I wound up going into seeing a massage therapist. And when she did my treatment, I had such a relief. And that kind of started my journey onto the healing arts profession. And I didn't realize how healing it would be actually just to touch somebody's body and be able to help them and it, it just kind of spiraled into that I always know I wanted to help people and it just turned into that and I've had so many rewarding years helping people uh, especially relieving them from pain because you know, pain is such a horrible thing that they carry around with them whether it be spiritual emotional or physical. So just being able to nurture somebody and just to relieve their pain is such a blessing. Yeah, I, you know, and I've always found, especially for, you know, for folks that do a lot of, you know, soul based or spiritual based work, um, sometimes and I am definitely guilty of this over the years, sometimes we tend to sort of fall away with taking care of our physical body, you know, we're dealing with the mental, the emotional body, we're dealing with our spiritual or soul selves, but sometimes the the sort of care, the physical care falls by the wayside. And I know for me, at least, I really like depend on and really rely on other practitioners like yourself to really help me with my physical body. And I can tell you, you know, when you talk about, you know, how good it feels to have someone, you know, lay their hands on you, you know, there's just, there's no way to describe how powerful that feels. So, I mean, I can absolutely totally resonate with that. Now, tell us, if I were to look at your week, you know, just an average week for Lisa, like, what are you doing these days? What do, what do you do? Well, since the pandemic and the transformation that's been going on, a lot of my treatments are actually incorporating coaching. I was when I was off with COVID, I was actually taking a, a coaching course so that I could pet, better assist my clients. So a lot of the time is it's bringing them in and I'm using a lot of neuro. NLP strategies just to get them to relax. I've been using a lot of meditation besides doing the actual physical treatment. So say you come in for a shoulder pain, but your anxiety level has gone from a 30 to a 70. We're doing a lot of deep breathing. And, and my practice is very individual. Like if you come to me, I really have to assess I'm trying to do the mind, body, spirit, right? And a lot of people don't realize that. Um, 
especially with COVID, the number one thing I found besides the anxiety and the stress is people are holding their breath. They're like holding everything in because they don't know what's going to happen next because of the unrest and the uncertainty. So a lot of my energy work lately has been calming, centering, breathing. Meditation has never been so important just to get people to breathe and release. So that besides fixing their shoulder or their leg pain or their neck, <laughs> it's, it, it, it just seems to be this natural progression. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and it was such a blessing to see my clients again. It, it was almost um, one of those very hallmark moments. Like every time an, my clients would come back after three months, it, it, it was such an outpouring of, you know, kindness, compassion, and energy that it was like, you know, it, it, it was just such a blessing to get back to be able to help people mm-hmm. and to reconnect with them. Because I've never not touched uh, or worked with clients for a three month period in 25 wow. years. So it was, I was working with them from home and teaching some classes, but being able to actually physically touch them, like I feel very blessed. You know, I'm full of gratitude. And my clients are just, are just amazing souls. Well, you know what, that sort of brings me to the question, right? Is that, so, you know, for the last several months, you've been working with people face to face, of course, you know, having protocols and all that stuff in in place, but being, you know, that close to people, you know, whether it's through massage or um, any of the other wonderful things that you do, um, you know, how do you maintain your feelings around that any you know anxieties or fears or concerns that you have around that because you know at this point people are coming to you to assist them often in you know some of their own you know anxieties or fears or tension that they're holding around you know all this pandemic stuff so how are you looking after yourself well that's one thing I really had to do I really had to be grounding I had to really structure myself I mean with all the wonderful Um, classes and things I've taken medical Qigong helps you to nourish your energy and heal your body and create more energy Um, I also the number one thing is faith I have tremendous faith I believe in God I have been assisted by angels many many times in my life and I think my deep faith has um allowed me to be grounded and centered. Mm -hmm. One of the other things is I've been reading uh, Norman Vincent Peale's book, The Power of Positive Thinking, since I was 11 years old. And I, every time I start to waver and and start to feel like this, this is a lot, um, I read that book and I pray a lot, but I pray all the time. Like, I I think I've had clients say, Lisa, you're talking out loud. And I'm like, oh no, I'm just praying. Sorry. But I I ask for strength and guidance and wisdom to help me be able to do what I do. But everybody needs that right and I do believe that this is a challenging time in history but we will get through this we will persevere we are being guided the angels are here supporting us that's fantastic Lisa that sort of uh, leads me into you know a couple of the other things I really want to talk to you about today and I know that folks want me to talk to you about the angels and we're going to get there. We're going to get there, but you are co-author of almost 365 empowering stories. Okay. Which is a number one bestseller in Canada and internationally. Tell us about this book. Well, this book is kind of funny. Um, I was approached two years ago by um, actually one of my um, clients from the traditional Chinese medicine school from um in Newmarket. And uh, she's an entrepreneur herself. She's lovely. She's got positive energy. She said, like, Lisa, my friend is doing this book and it's about uh, different entrepreneurs and they, they just want an individual, like a little treasure from your life. And would you be interested in doing it? And I, so I wrote this story and it's a true story. So all the stories in here are true stories from entrepreneurs. And my big story that changed my life is Uh, When I was 19 years old, I was in my small town of Clifford, 
and I was driving across the major highway to go work at the regular little restaurant called the, Red, the Redwood Restaurant, which everybody knows of because it's this little tiny hamburger joint on the way to the beach. But as I was crossing the highway in a teeny tiny car, I got hit by a full size van on the driver's side. And what happened is um, I woke up and I had all I could see was light, but there was a man's voice, but it was an angel and he was wiping the glass from my face. And I wasn't in the driver's side anymore. I was in the passenger side. There was no driver's side left. And then all I could see was light and the voice, which was a male voice said, you are going to be fine. We're here with you. And all I saw was light all around me. And then I heard the sirens. And that was my first supernatural or um, meeting with the angels. Mm -hmm. I, and it took me years to process that. It wasn't just like, oh, that's what happened to me. Um, not until I was doing my first client. Um, I had finished my massage. I started, I opened my first business and I had a man in and uh, he was in tremendous pain, like beyond my scope of practice. I was like, and I, I just started praying and saying, you know, God, can you maybe help me intervene with this and help me with this man feel better? Because he was in terrible pain. And when I put my hands on, I saw the same lights. And I was like, oh, wow. And uh, I felt this energy go through my body and into his body. And I was like, okay. And then I, I was becoming self-aware. So that took from the age of 19 to the age of 27, just to realize what was happening but he had such a, a magnificent transformation the pain was gone and this is a man who's been suffering in pain for many many years mm -hmm. and then the, um, he called me to ask me what I had done mm -hmm. and I was like nothing I did nothing I I'm sorry and of course I was a young entrepreneur so I thought I'm going to get sued I must have done something wrong um, but he actually came to see me he it was that impertinent so when I did meet him at the at my first spa, he came face to me and he goes, I want to know exactly what you did. And I was like, I felt very intimidated. And I said, I put my head down and I was like, because I, I didn't know how to make this professional that I'm praying for you. What, so, do, you believe, what do you believe Lisa happened to him? Oh, uh, no, I believe that God and the angels gave me the energy to, okay. to heal him. And I directly believe it was Archangel Michael, because after many years of doing this, his, his presence is very, very strong. And um, lots of my clients have witnessed and felt this energy and actually heard him or heard the wings. So I believe he had a healing. And I believe I was just the conduit mm -hmm. for the healing because I asked for the energy, right? And so that's what I believed happened. And then when I told him that, he was like, oh, that's great. Can you make sure you do that every time I come? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's so great. that's how I went from regular heal healer to you know massage person to faith healer i suppose that's yeah. that's how it all transitioned that's, that's quite fantastic. interesting yeah yeah and so and it and it's just progressed from there with her lisa i want to pick up where we left off um when you had mentioned that you were doing a healing or facilitating a healing and you felt like it was the angels and god sort of working through you if you could help our viewers at home just know something about you, what is your concept of God or God energy when we refer to it like that? Well, my personal belief is God is like omnipresent. We are all part of the divine spark. And that's, I grew up in the United Church, uh, but through all the healing, I find it's divine love. Like God is divine love. He is there for us. He is omnipresent. He's the most powerful energy in the entire universe, whether we see it in human beings, whether we see it in the sky, whether we see it in the earth. It is just a part of who we all are. Okay. And do you just feel like your reference to sort of a male gender is just a preference for you? Oh, not at all. Actually, it's funny because Angels are like the spiritual spark, right? And I think they appear to you what you need to hear. So sometimes I've heard a male voice, and then sometimes I've heard a female voice, and then sometimes I've heard voices that are 
neither female nor male. I think they appear to you for what you can understand because it's like communication. Um, one of the best things I ever heard during my pack is that when people are trying or spirits or angels are trying to talk to you, sometimes it's like they're communicating with Braille. It's like a whole new language and they're trying to get on your frequency or your wavelength so you can understand. And so that's how it is. I don't think they are specifically male or yeah. female. Yeah. And I it sounds like you, you, you feel the same way when you're referring to the God energy too. Do you feel like you yeah. f- philosophize that the same way? No, I, I believe that to be true. I okay. believe both the, I, I feel both energy. It's yeah. funny because Chinese medicine is very yin, which is the, or yin is the female and yang mm-hmm. is the male. Mm-hmm. But the thing is they're together, right? And, and that's what makes up the balance because we yeah. are a balance of both. That's right. Yeah, that's so it beautiful. Makes, it makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. That we are both. We are divine yeah. love. We are pure love. That's right. that's what we all are. And my- now, Lisa, tell us, um, tell us about, you know, for our viewers at home that, I mean, and, and this is really awesome yeah. because you're actually our first angel guest on Ghosts of Dufferin County and beyond. Someone who works like, directly and specifically with angels. So for our viewers at home, um, you know, what are angels and does everyone have angels around them? Absolutely. Um, angels are messengers from God or the omnipresent or divine source. They are angelic spiritual beings. They're pure love. Uh, we all have angels around us. We all have a specific guardian angel, um, but the angels are here to help us. They're like our light workers to sit, to support us and guide us and get us through whatever we need them. It, it, it just, they're here to comfort us, to provide us solace. It's just like our helpers. I think the, the creator God, uh, gave us his creations, uh, the angels, the divine spark to help us so that he could guide us. It's like, come on, there's always someone here to hold your hand and move you forward. So we're never alone. Yeah. So what do you feel? And I, and I know, you know, a lot of folks are very aware of angelic presence in their lives and others aren't, and that's okay. But what are you know, what are some signals or signs that angels might leave for us so that we, they're letting us know that they're there so that we can recognize them? What are some of those signals? Well, I've had lots of clients and we have this discussion all the time. So I just had a client in yesterday and she was like, Lisa, on the way here, I got two, two, two. She actually takes pictures of it. So she gets different sequence of numbers. Um, I have another client. She has this beautiful jar and in it is many, many feathers. And she believes when she prays, she'll find, she'll say, a lot of people want to ask for guidance or help. And it's kind of the way that they'll appear to you. And again, it has to resonate with you. There's no point of an angel sending you a signal you're not going to get. Um, Also, I find they'll, a lot of people have prophetic dreams. They'll say, Lisa, I had a dream of an angel beside my bed or especially after a loved one's passed, they'll talk about seeing the loved one and seeing an angel with them. Or if a loved one's in a room, the the hospice, many, many stories of this, being at the hospice, the light filling the room, and then the the family member passing and feeling the presence of angels being surrounded and supported with love. Mm -hmm. And they just say it's such a brilliant feeling with the light. Yeah. 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 And and that's, that's really, that's really profound actually, because some of my most, my most powerful experiences with both guardian angels and other angels uh, for me often is an overwhelming feeling of comfort. That's what it's always felt like to me. I've also had experiences guys where I'll be, you know, driving somewhere. I remember, I remember specifically when this occurred and this was a number of years ago, but I remember driving and it was like really not great out for weather. It was winter and, you know, you know, sort of white knuckle driving. Right. And so I remember asking for safety. I remember asking for care. And then within moments, it was an overwhelming scent of roses in my car, which, you know, totally floored me. And I was just so grateful for that presence. But that is one of the ways that they let me know that they could hear me and that they were there. So it came through scent. And I heard you talk about feathers, Lisa, repetitive number sequences, any others that any of us might be able to recognize? 
Well, that's another thing with the scent. Different people will smell different things, um, whether it's a loved one or an angel showing up. Um, a lot of the time, um, you'll just have a sense of where you're going to go. So you'll just get this this feeling like, no, no, I'm supposed to go here. I don't know. I have, it's like an intuitive sensation or a synchronistic moment where you're like, I know I have to go here right now. This has happened to me many, many times. I was working at uh, the spot Belfountain when it was in Belfountain. It's now in Aaron. And I was with, like, I had a client, a full day. All of a sudden, three clients canceled, which never happens. And I heard the angel say to me, you need to go outside right now. And I'm like, Okay, so I walked out the door and this young fellow was cycling and he had just stopped right outside the spa door. He's about 16 years old. And I'm like, hi, are you okay? And he's like, no, I'm not having a very good day. And I'm like, okay. And it, it turned out that he had run away from home. And so I said, well, you come with me. Why don't we give your mom a call? But I knew exactly at that moment. So they make things, they create time and space. So they'll say, actions start to occur when you ask angels for help, just like you with the smell of the roses and that amazing feeling of comfort and security. When you pray, they facilitate. Mm -hmm. And that's how they come to you. And they'll come to you in the form that if you're in service to them, like I always say, what would you like me to do today? And then I'll get a task. Mm -hmm. Or, or if you're asking for help for yourself or a loved one, you will get those sensations. Yeah. Now that's amazing because I know, I already know that some of our viewers at home right now are asking, well, geez, that sounds an awful lot like signs that I receive from my loved ones and family on the other side. It sounds a lot like my intuition, like my guides. And I always say guys, so if you're asking that question yourself right now, it really doesn't actually matter where this information is coming from, whether it's from a spirit guide, a helper, an angel, um, your highest self, whatever that is, as long as the vibration of this, this message, this feeling um, is one of, you know, power and love and intelligence. And so just go with it. So, you know, if I keep getting two, 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 I say, who's sending it to me? It doesn't really matter where it's coming from. It's an important message from the universe at large, no matter where it's coming from. Now, in terms of those, you know, definitive beings of light or the all that is or the God energy, you know. So that brings me then to Lisa. If someone wanted to sort of get to know the angels who work with them, what would you say to them? How can they do that? Well, I, I work with a lot of clients and they always ask me this. So number one, you have to ask, like, you have to ask for the angels to help you. And they like when you talk to them, they're like, they love it. They're like, because they want your trust and they want to help you and they want to give you guidance. So the first thing is to ask, I just like praying. I pray a lot. And I just say, angels, can you guide me to whatever I'm supposed to do today? Or angels, can you guide me? My daughter's driving in a snowstorm and I'm, I'm not feeling very comfortable with that. Um, can you give me some guidance today? I always keep a journal. It's one of the best things I've ever done since public school because I'll wake up with a thought first thing in the morning or during the night with a dream and I'll write it down. And I've always had wonderful messages from the angels. One time I woke up and I wrote the, the 333 and I was like, and it really did pertain to that day's events. And I was like, oh, you're here with me. And it just makes you feel comforted and secured and loved. I think that's the most wonderful thing with angels is they give you unconditional love. So praying is number one. Two, I would do the journaling. And three, um, another thing I like to do is I have like little angel cards. I have all different types of angel cards and I have a lot of angels because I love them. And let me just pick and I'll pick a card just so that it opens up my mind and then I could spend like 20 minutes in meditation. So let's pick a card. Okay, good. So my little card for today is abundance. Yeah. So then I'll put that at the beginning of my day and I'll think, how can I inspire abundance to people? Or I might want to give somebody something. Is With this card, I generally will buy an angel candle and drop it off to a friend. And more often than not, people will say to me, you know, I was having a bad day and you just made my day. So it's kind of that way. It's kind of like opening up the channels for communication. Yeah. And if you sense. want, yeah. And if you want to talk specifically to an angels, cause there's so many angels, um, sometimes with Archangel Michael, I like to use him, especially at this time. 
with what's going on with COVID because so many people need strength um, to get through this. And Archangel Michael is such a powerful light energy. And he always seems to help me stand up straight, stay confident and move forward. So I I like to say, Archangel Michael, please, please fill me with uh, heavenly light. Actually, sometimes I say spiritual chi, you know, that's a Chinese medicine getting in there. And I say, can you just please make me my God armor strong for today so that I can do the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. And I find he, he always answers with me. It always so, resonates. Yeah. I mean, that's beautiful. That's fantastic. I love the cards. I love that. It sound, what it sounds like to me is, you know, is setting an intention to come into relationship with your angels. And that can look any number of ways, but asking for presence, um, you know, praying if we want to pray, um, using cards as a sort of conduit between our communication, you know, them and us and all of that stuff. And that's just fantastic. But I do want to ask you this, Lisa, and I know we're, we're sort of running out on time, but um you know, if someone felt blocked in terms of meeting their angels or coming into communion with them, is that something someone could see you for and you could help facilitate that sort of um, relationship to begin with? Yes. A lot of the time I'll have, I I, I get this a lot, actually, whether it's when I'm teaching Reiki or whatever, I'm just not feeling it. How do I feel it? And I'm like, okay, okay. So that's when I have to bring people back into themselves, get in touch with meditation. And then I'll do like a guided meditation with the angels with them. And then they start to see, oh, oh, I'm seeing a purple color. But it's a lot of the time, it's just aligning the chakras and grounding and be in a meditative state you're not when we're in this frantic state like i want i want this now that's not how things happen everything is a process we have to learn you have to learn how to write we read a book to learn things because the mind is grasping how to do the the actual technical thing and really with meditation is one of the best um avenues to learn how to communicate with your angels when you think about people praying they're always sitting in quiet contemplation right Mm -hmm. and that's how you connect once you can ground yourself physically and emotionally you're going to be more open to connect with them